Chapter 1 When I stepped out into the bright sunlight from the darkness of the movie house, I had only two things on my mind. Paul Newman and a ride home. I was wishing I looked like Paul Newman. He looks tough and I don't. But I guess my own looks aren't so bad. I had light brown, almost red hair and greenish gray eyes. I wish they were more gray. Because I hate most guys that had green eyes. But I have to be content with what I have. My hair is longer than a lot of boys wear theirs, squared off in the back and long at the front and sides, but I am a greaser, and most of my neighborhood rarely bothers to get a haircut. Besides, I look better with long hair. I had a long walk home and no company, but I usually loan it anyway, for no reason except that I like to watch movies undisturbed so I can get into them and live them with the actors. When I see a movie with someone, it's kind of uncomfortable, like having someone read your book over your shoulder. I'm different that way. I mean, my second oldest brother, Soda, who's 16 going on 17, never cracks a book at all. And my oldest brother, Daryl, who we call Derry, works too long and hard to be interested in a story or drawing a picture, so I'm not like that. And nobody in our gang digs movies and books the way I do. For a while there, I thought I was the only person in the world that did, so I loved it. Soda tries to understand, at least, which is more than Derry does. But then Soda is different from anybody. He understands everything, almost. Like he's never hollering at me all the time the way Terry is, or treating me as if I was six instead of 14. I love Soda more than I've loved anyone, even mom and dad. He's always happy-go-lucky and grinning, while Terry's hard and firm and rarely grins at all. But then Terry's gone through a lot in his 20 years, growing up too fast. Soda Pop will never grow up at all. I don't know which way is the best. I'll find out one of these days. Anyway, I went on walking home, thinking about the movie, and then suddenly wishing I had some company. Greasers can't walk alone too much, or they'll get jumped, or somebody will come by and scream, Greaser, at them, which doesn't make you feel too hot, if you know what I mean. We get jumped by the socials. I'm not sure how you spell it, but it's the abbreviation for the socials, the jet set, the west side rich kids. It's like the term greaser, which is used to class all us boys on the east side. We're poorer than the socials, and the middle class... I reckon we're wilder, too. Not like the socials who jump greasers and wreck houses and throw beer glass for kicks, get editorials in the paper for being a public disgrace one day, and an asset to society the next. Greasers are almost like hoods. We steal things. Drive old souped-up cars, hold up gas stations, and have a gang fight once in a while. I don't mean I do things like that. Aaron would kill me if I got into trouble with the police. Since Mom and Dad were killed in an auto wreck, three of us get to stay together only as long as we behave. So Soda and I stay out of trouble as much as we can. We're careful not to get caught when we can't. I only mean that most greasers do things like that. Just like we wear our hair long and dress in blue jeans and t-shirts or leave our shirt tails out and wear leather jackets and tennis shoes and boots. I'm not saying that either socials or greasers are better. That's just the way things are. I could have waited to go to the movies until Derry or Soda Pop got off work. They would have gone with me or driven me there or walked along, although Soto just can't sit still long enough to enjoy a movie, and they bore Derry to death. Derry thinks his life is enough without inspecting other people's. Or I could have gotten one of the gang to come along. One of the four boys Derry and Soda and I have grown up with and considered family. We're almost as close as brothers. When you grow up in a tight-knit neighborhood like ours, you get to know each other real well. If I had thought about it, I could have called Derry and he would have come by on his way home and picked me up. Or two-bit Matthews, one of our gang, would have come by and get me in his car if I had asked him. But sometimes I just don't use my head. It drives my brother Terry nuts when I do stuff like that because I'm supposed to be smart. I make good grades and have a high IQ and everything, but I don't use my head. Besides, I like walking. I about decided I didn't like it so much, though, when I spotted that red poor bear trailing. I was almost two blocks from home then, so I started walking a little faster. I had never been jumped, but I had seen Johnny after four socials got a hold of him, and it wasn't pretty. Johnny was scared out of his own shadow after that. Johnny was 16 now. I knew it wasn't any use, though, the fast walking. I mean, even before the Corvette pulled up beside me and five socials got out, I got pretty scared. I'm kind of small for 14, even though I have a good build, and those guys were bigger than me. I automatically hitched my thumbs into my teens, slouched, wondering if I could get away and break for it. 
I remember Johnny, his face all cut up and bruised. I remember how he had cried when we found him half conscious in a corner lot. Johnny had it awful rough at home. It took a lot to make him cry. I was sweating something fierce, although I was cold. I could feel my palms getting clammy, perspiration running down my back. I get like that when I'm real scared. I glanced around for a pop bottle or a stick or something. Steve Randall, Soda Pop's best friend, had once held off four guys with a busted pop bottle. But there was nothing. So I stood there like a bump on a log while they surrounded me. I don't use my head. They walked around slowly, silently, smiling. Hey, Grease, one said in an over-friendly voice. We're going to do you a favor, Greaser. We're going to cut all that long, greasy hair off. He had on a Madras shirt. I can still see it. Blue Madras. One of them laughed, then cussed me out in a low voice. I couldn't think of anything to say. There just isn't a whole lot you can say while waiting to get mugged, so I kept my mouth shut. Need a haircut, Greaser? The medium sized blind pulled a knife out of the back pocket and flipped the blade over. I finally thought of something to say. No, I was backing up, away from that knife. Of course, I backed right into one of them. They had me down in a second. They had my arms and legs pinned down, and one of them was sitting on my chest with his knees on my elbows. And if you don't think that hurts, you're crazy. I could smell English leather, shaving lotion, stale tobacco, and I wondered foolishly if I would suffocate before they did anything. I was scared so bad, I was wishing I would. I fought to get loose, and I almost did for a second. Then they tightened up on me, and the one on my chest slugged me a couple times. So I lay still swearing at them between gasps. A blade was held against my throat. How'd you like that haircut to begin just below the chin? It occurred to me then that they could kill me. I went wild. I started screaming for soda, dairy, anyone. Someone put his hand over my mouth and I bit as hard as I could, tasting the blood running through my teeth. I heard a muttered curse and got slugged again, and they were stuffing a handkerchief in my mouth. One of them kept saying, Shut him up! For Pete's sake, shut him up! Then there were shouts and the pounding of feet, and the socials jumped up and left me lying there, gasping. I lay there and wondered what in the world was happening. People were jumping over me and running by me, and I was too dazed to figure it out. Then someone had me under the armpits, calling me to my feet. It was good. You all right, Pony Boy? He was shaking me, and I wished he'd stop. I was dizzy enough anyway. I could tell it was Derry, though, probably because of the voice, and probably because Derry's always rough with me without meaning to be. I'm okay. Quit shaking me. Derry, I'm okay. He stopped it instantly. I'm sorry. He wasn't really. Derry is never sorry for anything he does. It seems funny to me that he should look just exactly like my father and act exactly the opposite from him. My father was only 40 when he died, and he looked 25, and a lot of people thought Derry and Dad were brothers instead of father and son. But they only looked alike. My father was never rough with anyone without me. Derry is six feet two and broad-shouldered and muscular. He has dark brown hair that kicks out in the front, slight cowling to the back, just like Dad's. But Derry's eyes are his own. He's got eyes that are like two pieces of pale blue-green ice. They've got a determined set to them like the rest of him. He looks older than 20, tough, cool, and smart. He would be real handsome if his eyes weren't so cold. He doesn't understand anything that is not plain hard fact, but he uses his head. I sat down, rubbing my cheeks where I've been snug the most. Derry jammed his fists in his pockets. They didn't hurt you too bad, did they? They did. I was smarting and aching, and my chest was sore, and I was so nervous my hands were shaking, and I wanted to stop bawling. But you just don't say that to Derry. I'm okay. Soda Pop came loping back. By then I had figured that all that noise that I had heard was the gang coming to rescue me. He dropped down beside me, examining my head. You got cut up a little bit, huh, pony boy? I only looked at him blankly. I did. He pulled out a handkerchief and wet the end of it with his tongue and pressed it against the side of my head. You're bleeding like a stuck pig. I am? Look, he showed me the handkerchief, reddened as if by magic. Did they pull a blade on you? I remembered the voice. Need a haircut, Greaser? The blade must have slipped while he was trying to shut me up. Yeah. Soda is handsomer than anyone else I know. Not like Derek. Soda's movie star kind of handsome. The kind of people stop on the street to watch go by. He's not as tall as Derek, and he's a little slimmer, but he has a finely drawn, sensitive face that somehow manages to be reckless and thoughtful at the same time. 
He's got dark gold hair that he combs back, long and silky and straight, and in the summer the sun bleaches it to a shining weak gold. His eyes are dark brown, lively, dancing, recklessly laughing eyes that can be gentle and sympathetic one moment and blazing with anger the next. He has dad's eyes, but Soda is one of a kind. He can get drunk in a drag race or dancing without ever getting near alcohol. In our neighborhood, it's rare to find a kid who doesn't drink once in a while, but Soda never touches a drop. He doesn't need to. He gets drunk on just plain living, and he understands everybody. He looked at me more closely. I looked away hurriedly because, if you want to know the truth, I was starting to bawl. I knew I was as white as I felt, and I was shaking like a leaf. Soda just put his hand on my shoulder. Easy, pony boy. They ain't going to hurt you no more. I know, I said, but the ground began to blur, and I felt hot tears running down my cheeks. I brushed them away impatiently. I'm just a little spooked, that's all. I drew a quivering breath and quit crying. You just don't cry in front of Derry. Not unless you're hurt like Johnny had been that day we found him in the vacant lot. Compared to Johnny, I wasn't hurt at all. Soda rubbed my hair. You're an okay kid, pony. I had to grin at him. Soda can make you grin no matter what. I guess it's because he's always grinning so much himself. You're crazy, Soda. Out of your mind. Derry looked as if he'd like to knock our heads together. You're both nuts. Soda merely cocked one eyebrow, a trick he picked up from two bit. She's running this family. Derry stared at him for a second, then cracked a grin. Soda Pop isn't afraid of him like everyone else, and enjoys teasing him. I just assumed he's a fully grown grizzly, but for some reason, Derry seems to like being teased by Soda. Our gang had chased the socials to their car and heaved rocks at them. They came running towards us now, four lean, hard guys. They were all tough as nails and looked it. I'd grown up with them, and they accepted me, even though I was younger, because I was Derry and Soda's kid brother, and I kept my mouth shut good. Steve Randall was 17, tall, lean, thick, greasy hair, and kept combed in complicated swirls. He was cocky, smart, and Soda's best buddy since grade school. Steve's specialty was cars. He could lift a hubcap quicker and more quietly than anyone in the neighborhood. But he also knew cars upside down and backward. He could drive anything on wheels. He and Soda worked at the same gas station, Steve part-time and Soda full-time, and their station got more customers than any other in town. Whether that was because Steve was so good with cars or because Soda attracted girls like Honey Draws Flies, I couldn't tell you. I liked Steve only because he was Soda's best friend. He didn't like me. He thought I was a tag-along and a kid. Soda always took me with them when they went places if they weren't taking girls, and that bugged Steve. It wasn't my fault. Soda always asked me. I didn't ask him. Soda doesn't think I'm a kid. Tubin Matthews was the oldest of the gang and the wisecracker of the bunch. He was about six feet tall, stocky in build, and very proud of his long, rusty-colored sideburns. He had gray eyes and a wide grin he couldn't stop making funny remarks to save his life. You couldn't shut up that guy. He always had to get his two bits worth in, hence his name. Even his teachers forgot his real name was Keith, and we hardly remembered that he had one. Life was one big joke to two-bit. He was famous for shoplifting and his black handled switchblade, which he couldn't have acquired without his first talent. And he was always smarting off to the cops. He really couldn't help it. Everything he said was so irresistibly funny that he just had to let the police in on it to brighten up their dull lives. That's the way he explained it to me. He liked fights, blondes, and for some unfathomable reason, school. He was still a junior at 18 and a half, and he never learned anything. He just went for kicks. I liked him real well because he kept us laughing at ourselves as well as at other things. He reminded me of Will Rogers. Maybe it was the grin. If I had to pick the real character of the gang, it would be Dallas Winston. Dally. I used to like to draw his picture when he was in a dangerous mood. So then I could get his personality down in a few lines. He had an elfish face with high cheekbones and a pointed chin, small, sharp animal teeth, and ears like a lynx. His hair was almost white, it was so blonde, and he didn't like haircuts or hair oil either. So it fell over his forehead in wisps, kicked out the back in tufts, curled behind his ears and along the nape of his neck. His eyes were blue, blazing, ice cold, the hatred of the whole world. Dally had spent three years on the wild side of New York and had been arrested at the age of ten. He was tougher than the rest of us, tougher, colder, meaner. 
The shade of difference that separates a greaser from a hood wasn't present in Downey. He was as he was as wild as the boys in the downtown outfits, like Tim Shepard's gang. In New York, 